In this Back to the Basics series, Part 4, we're going to install a Zeus USB Z-Wave dongle into a Raspberry Pi 4. I'm going to take the steps that I showed in my previous live stream and condense those down for you so it's easy to follow. If you want to watch the entire live stream and get all the commentary, make sure you check it out. So let's get started. Um, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to shut it down. So under Supervisor... I can go to system and I can um, shut down the host. All right, so this is shutting down. I'm gonna assume it doesn't take very long. It's probably shut down. The reason I'm doing that is I'm just gonna plug this in without the device powered on. Um, I just got an alert that this went down, which is great. Okay, so it's unplugged from the power now I'm going to open this box. So this is kind of a neat little box. I just left it in the box because it's a little, one of these little sliding boxes. Take that out. And there's a user manual. I'm going to go without using the user manual today. There's a bunch of stuff on here. But I'm not going to use that today. And inside this thing is the little device with a little cover on it. All right, um, let me plug this in. I'm gonna plug it into 3.0, why not? Just put it in here. Not that way. Uh, yes, that way. Ugh. All right, I don't know um, that there's any kind of indicators on here, but I'm gonna put the power back on it. And we talked about this when I did the Back to the Basic series. Uh, this power cord is connected to the three amp or whatever it is, power supply that came with the Pi. When you start attaching stuff to your Pi, you're going to draw more power, obviously, and you're going to want to make sure you definitely have a decent power supply to run this stuff. Um, so make sure that you either use the one that came with it in the kit or you have one that's um, two or three amps at minimum. All right. So, oh, look, a pretty light. So this is booting up now. So we have this thing up and running. Um, let's look at um, host and let's see what the hardware is on the host now. So when you plug in a device, um, most people, or people, are, and including myself, are using this dev TTY ACM0. If you move that USB, if, if you move this USB deal uh, into another port, this may change to something else. And so they talk about using this as your Z-Wave device. So jot this down when you're doing this, if you're doing this. So you need this, so I'm gonna to try to copy it. All right, awesome. So now what we're gonna do is what I didn't do on my production system. I'm going to install Z-Wave Beta as the, the first step instead of moving over to, to Z-Wave Beta and just see what happens. You'll need that hardware to address in order to install this stuff or in order to tell Z-Wave where this is. So the first thing I need is I need something from the add-on store, which is the Z-Wave uh, add-on. So the official add-on. And I will install that. Because what you're going to do is install this and then you're going to go over to the integrations page. And I got to remember that I'm doing this correct. I'm sorry, I, you can't see this, can you? How about that? All right, well, we're installing this right now. So nothing to see here. Nothing's going on. This is just going to sit for a little bit. So no changes needed for that. Let me turn that camera off for a while for battery and we're installing the open or we're installing the open z-wave um, integration or add-on I'm gonna put that device right there probably put it in quotes single quotes and then the network key I don't have any network key stuff now in my production I have a network key because I have some secure devices like door locks and you need to have the network key a network key for that. You can auto generate a network key. It's it's really just random characters in a certain format. And there is a document somewhere where you can generate the, the random or you can generate a network key. And then that's the key that all your devices will use when they connect to your system. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna save it. This is all I need that I'm aware of. And then start it, go to the log, 
logs are always important. It looks like it started. Node one is the, the dongle. It, it looks to me like um, this light flickered for a second when this came online. All right, so nothing's going on. So this is installed. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to integration. Here is Open Z Waves. So I discovered it because I installed that um, that, in, that add-on, the Open Z Wave add-on. So now I'll configure it and I'm gonna set up the Open Z Wave integration with the Open Z Wave add-on. So add-on, so here's the order so far. Turn off the, the device, plug in the dongle, turn it back on, find the hardware address, uh, install Open Z Wave add-on, and put the hardware address, and if you need a network key, put that in the configuration. Start up the Open Z Wave add on, come over to integrations, and then it should auto find that, and then you can configure. So let's submit this. So it has now found the following devices this is the Zeus ZST10 S2 Z Wave Plus stick. And I'll leave the area alone, don't care. You do need MQTT installed before you do the rest of this. So make sure you have MQTT installed on your, your um, whatever this thing's called, your server. So I do, whoops. So anyway, there it is. All right, so what I wanna do now is take this device. This is a uh, appliance switch. It's just a Z-Wave switch. And I'm gonna go over here uh, first. I'm gonna check the logs. So let's go back over to the supervisor and open Z-Wave and look at the log. And it's just sitting here. It, it sees MQTT. So that's important. If this is, is pinging and responding, then your MQTT stuff is, is working and it's requirement again. Okay, so we're, I'm, I'm done looking at this screen. Now I wanna go over here and I want to actually, uh, well, let's go back over here. I wanna, I want to add this device. So adding a device is pretty simple. Uh, I want to go to configuration integrations. I'm going to configure and now we're going to go to the camera and I'm going to add this node. But before I do that, uh, this piece is important. I have no juice, so I need to get my cord over here. All right. So now if we can see, you can barely see that with the lighting, there is a blue flash. So every device is going to have its own way to pair with a USB hub. Uh, so read the, read the directions on the devices you purchased. You're going to push a button. You're going to hold a button. You're going to push a button twice. You're going to whatever. So it's flashing, meaning it's waiting for something to talk to. So I'm going to click on it. Uh, click on the add note here. And I'm going to push this button, turn it on. I'm going to turn it off and on a couple of times. And it just signifies to the system that there's a new thing. And I'm so close. I mean, I'm like right here distance wise. It's, it's a lot better adding things than it used to be where you had to be like right in, you had to have these devices almost touching for them to, to connect. Uh, that's solid now. So now that it's solid, uh, it's quite likely that it's paired. Trying to set it down without destroying everything here. It's likely that it's paired. So um, how we tell that is we come over to developer tools. And the first thing I can do is I can filter on node ID. And voila. So that was super simple. Now, what do we want to do? Let's just let's make a practical use case out of this. Um, just for lack of anything else, I'm going to edit the dashboard. I'm going to add a button card. Well, let me do something else first. I, when you, when you install things, it's best as you install them to name them. Cause if you don't name them, when you have two of the same thing, you gotta go figure out which thing it is. So if I go back over to integrations, open Z wave, two devices, click on this one. I want to rename this to um, demo test switch. I don't know. So that's demo test switch as the name. Do I want to rename the entity IDs of your entities? Sure. So now all my entities say demo test switch. 
and each thing has sensor, demo, test switch, electric, kilowatt hour. So it appends the thing, the type of thing it is that's measuring. Uh, this switch actually has, um, this thing actually has power monitoring in it, which is cool. So if you have an appliance, you want to know how much power it's using, you can use that kind of switch. Um, so this has um, power usage, uh, it has kilowatt hours, and then it has electric watts. Now we can go back to the dashboard and we can do something practical with it. And I'm already in edit, so I'm gonna add the button card. Card, and maybe that's what was the button card. Click the button card. See, and it automatically finds, I don't know how it determines what thing to put here, but it found this. It's probably the only switch type entity I have on the, my, my demo development device anyway. So I'm gonna call this demo switch. And I'm gonna just do MDI. I wonder if I can do refrigerator. Is that, a, is that an icon? No. Uh, fridge. I think y'all spent, oh look, check it out. So the reason I chose refrigerators, I used to have this thing on the refrigerator. So you could actually put a refrigerator icon. And then my tap action is gonna to be toggle. So I wanna to turn it on or off. You can navigate, uh, you can open a URL, you can call a service or do nothing. Um, so let me save it. Let me get out of edit mode. And now I have this massively huge demo switch. So now if I click on that, let me unbury everything here. You might even hear it switch, but there's the, there's the blue light. You can barely see the blue light. If I click on this switch over here, it turns it off. See, it went off and it's instantaneous. In addition, my little, my little blue light on my Pi down here, you can kind of see that flash too. Let me go over the steps again or under supervisor. The first thing I did, it was already running my system. I shut it down. And after I shut it down, I took this, uh, this Z wave Zeus thing, which is this S2 stick right here, plug this in. And then I went over after restarting the, turning it back on. Uh, and I did pull the power, by the way, make sure you pull the power. And then I went over here and I added under the add-on store. I went to add-on store and I searched for Z-Wave. Added the open Z-Wave add-on. I configured it. Oh wait, let me back up. I skipped a step. Once you install uh, that device, you need to know what the hardware address is of it. So you come back over here to host, click on hardware. It gives you a list of devices. Typically, it's going to be something like this, this really long USB blah, blah, blah thing. Okay, once you have that, copy it or whatever, come over here and in your add-on store, you will add under configuration that device. This is now configured. You would start up Open Z-Wave, the add-on. Once you start that up, check your logs, make sure there isn't anything just glaring. It's a lot of gibberish, but make sure it's it's um, it's running and there's no weird stuff in it. It will find the open Z-Wave um, uh, add-on and it will say configure much like this one does. And you come over here, configure it. Configuration, all it does is when you click on, or when you click on configure, it will just add it to your, your system using the open Z-Wave add-on. The Z open Z-Wave add-on is the communication between your devices and, um, this box, the open Z wave integration, which is this thing turns those conversations on the add on into something home assistant can use, IE entities and stuff like that. So you need both of those things to, to work. Those are the things you need to do to get this up and running. And then once you do that, you come over to uh, configure and you would just add a node and follow the directions of whatever thing, it, the thing is that you're going to add switches or um, lights or whatever, whatever it's going to be. So in a nutshell, that's the simple steps and it doesn't take long, really. If everything, if everything goes well, it shouldn't take you very long at all. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful to you. If you liked the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, uh, leave me comments or questions down below and I'll try to get to those. Hit me up on, on my discord server and we'll see you on the next one.